Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top Podcast. This is episode 392 for the 25th of Kislev in a regular year. It's the first day of Hanukkah, so happy Hanukkah, everybody, and I hope that you have a great holiday. So we're up to chapter three of the book, and in today's chapter, we're going to continue on. We've been, in the previous two chapters, we've been looking at the makeup of the soul and what the Jewish soul is made up of. So just to recap a little bit, we've been talking about how every Jewish person has actually not one, but two souls, the animal soul and the godly soul. And then we briefly mentioned last time that within the godly soul, there are actually three different levels of the soul. There's the nefesh, the ruach, and the neshama very, very, very loosely translated as life force, spirit, and soul. But these are super, you know, um, coarse translations. So, you know, just I'm going to try to use the Hebrew terms as much as as possible with these kind of things because it really is hard to get an exact translation. And so, and today we're going to explain how each one of these levels of the soul is actually made up of 10 parts. So, and we're going to learn about how these 10 parts correspond to 10 godly energies. So you may have heard the idea that, you know, man was created in the image of God. This is, you know, written in Brachis in, um, in the book of Genesis. It talks about that there, you know, how we were created in the image of God. So really one way that we can look at this is really in terms of the map of the soul, in terms of what the components of the soul are made up of. So we know that there are, in terms of the energy by which elsewhere in Kabbalah and in Hasidus, it talks about how God really isn't, and we're going to talk about this in a lot more depth later, how God is not to be, be divided up into any parts. God is one and unified and that's it, you know, but Nevertheless, in choosing to create the world, God chose to make these 10 energy forces and have these energy forces be the building blocks of all of creation. So everything in the world is made up of these 10 energy forces. And so what we learn about in today's Tanya is about how these 10 10 energy forces, these 10 godly energy forces, which are are called the spheros, um, again, translation is a little bit awkward. You know, you can, I've seen translations of the spheres as being spheres or sapphires. Um, I like to think of them as just godly energies. Basically there are, there are 10 different types of energy that God uses to create the world. So these 10 energy forces are mirrored inside of our soul. So our souls are so similarly made up of 10 parts, whether we're talking about the nefesh part of the soul, the ruach part of the soul, or the neshama part of the soul. Each one of these parts of the soul is made up of 10 parts. And now what we're going to learn about in today's portion is how this these 10 parts are actually subdivided into two parts, which once again corresponds to the spheros, which are also subdivided into two parts. Um, what the ultra rabbi Refer the way the Alter Rebbe refers to them here, which he's sourcing from Kabbalistic literature, is he says that the the way these two parts are the these what are these two parts that these two subdivisions, it's three mothers and seven doubles. So why they're called mothers and why they're called doubles, we'll talk about soon. But just to know that right now, that when we're talking about the spheros, we're talking about the fact that they are made up of three mothers and seven doubles. And so to further break that down, what that means is that these three mothers, what are they exactly? They are what three intellectual attributes it's chokhma bina and das again i'm throwing around these hebrew terms if you've never heard them before don't get overwhelmed i promise you you're going to hear these terms a lot so just try to you know 
remember these terms as best as possible right now. There's Chochma, Bina, and Das. Interesting factoid, those of you that you know know about the Chabad movement, which is the 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 movement, this book is the basis of that entire movement. It's actually an acronym of those three words, Chochma, Bina, and Das. Those are the three intellectual in, intellectual energies. So those are three. And then we said, okay, now there's seven. So then what are the seven? The seven are what's called the days of the building. The building of what? Uh, the building of the days of creation. So if you know, think about it, then the world was created those of you that are familiar with the Bible, the, the world was created in seven days, and each one of those seven days corresponded to one of these attributes. So those are the godly attributes. So again, there's three intellectual attributes, and then there's these seven you know, building blocks through which the world was created. And he lists the first three of them here. So there's seven again, but the first three are Chesed, Gvora, and Tiferes. Again, translations are so, so, so weak, but if we wanted to loosely translate them, chesed is giving and, you know, kindness. And then we have gvora, which is restraint. And then we have tiferes, which could be understood as like harmony or beauty or everything. Once we start start understanding them in terms of how they relate to us, we'll have a better understanding of what these terms mean. So... So then, so what the altar Rebbe is teaching us here is that in a person's soul, because we were created in the image of God, our souls are, were created with this mirror, with these 10 parts as well. And just like in the supernal realms with these supernal spheros, they were divided into two. So too, within our soul, do we have the, this division? So within our soul, we have the three intellectual att attributes. This is known as our intellect. And then we have the seven other attributes, which in terms of the soul, it's our seven character traits or our seven emotions um, of our soul within, within who we are. Okay, and then again, so now, once again, when we talk about if we want to name these things within the, the soul, the intellectual attributes of the soul, these three intellectual attributes of the soul are actually called by the same name as those that they were in the spheres, which is Chochma, Bina, and Das. And then when we get to the emotive attributes, the reason why these emotive attributes, if you remember, we call them doubles, the seven doubles, is because they actually do take on a different name here. So whereas in the supernal realms, we taught, we called them chesed, gvora, tiferet, those were the first three. In terms of the way they manifest within a person's soul, they manifest as being love of God that would correspond to chesed, you know, the giving and the loving kindness. Then we have um fearing God that would correspond to restraint. And then there is the idea of beautifying God, and that would correspond to harmony and beauty, as we mentioned. And so now another term that we use to describe the three intellectual attributes is actually that we call them the mother, the mothers. So why do we call them the mothers? Is because these three intellectual attributes are actually the source for the seven mitos, for the seven emotive attributes, which come out from them. And so, uh, you know, just on a logical level, the way that you can think about this is just that, you know, where do emotions come from? Why do we feel the way, different ways that we feel? Ultimately, it really all does stem from our mind. It stems from our thoughts. And our thoughts create our emotions. And the Ultra Rebbe is going to just finish off here, and he's going to talk about this in a little bit more detail and explain how this happens. And he says that the two primary intellectual attributes, so again, we said that there are three intellectual attributes. There's Chochmah, Bina, and Das. So the first two is Chochmah and, this, and Bina. And he says that these two can be thought of as the parents that give birth to these emotions. And so to break it down a little bit further, he starts with the first one and he says, okay, the very, very first one, is, which is called chokma. The word chokma in Hebrew is very interesting. If you mix around the letters a little bit, it actually spells something else. It says kochma, which literally means the power of what? So what does this mean exactly, the power of what? So Chochmah is commonly understood, often translated as kind of like intuition. Um, that primary, they often, it's, it's often described as like, you know, when there's a cartoon and somebody has like a light bulb and they have this like idea and it just comes to them, this initial idea. It's this spark of insight. Whenever you conceive of something, 
initially, that in that initial conception, that's what we know of as chokhmah. And it's kind of like this idea of where you're trying to take something from potential into actuality. So you know that there's some abstract idea out there, you know, like often artists will describe this or musicians will describe this idea that it's like they have this like idea or song or something. It's like on the tip of their tongue maybe a scientist coming up with a theory. It's like it's right there and they, they're trying to get it out of potential and they bring it into actuality. So that moment where you initially, that spark of like when you conceive of an idea, that's what we can think of as chokhmah. And that chokhmah is what we would call the father. That's the father in the in this paradigm of the parents. Then the second attribute is called bina. Bina is very loosely translated to mean understanding. So understanding is when you take that initial insight, that initial inspiration that you had, and you bring it down and you try to really deepen your understanding of it, basically, when you really try to like, you know, like sometimes you get this like revelation. I don't know if you ever experienced that. You know, you have this like, it's like you have this revelation, this insight, and you're like, oh my gosh, I know what this thing is, but it's hard to bring it into words, you know, and you don't, you haven't really fully fleshed out that idea yet. So Bina is when you actually flesh out the idea. Bina is when you're really trying to break it down and understand what it is that you're conceiving of exactly. What is this intuitive spark that you have just, has just, you know, come up in your mind or arose in your mind at this moment. So, um, so this Bina is called the mother. So together we have the, the father and the mother and these two parents, they give birth. They are what gives birth to our love of God and our fear of God. Because if you remember all this entire discussion is we're discussing the, the godly soul, you know? And so the godly soul, obviously it's, it's whole purpose is serving God and that's its entire orientation. So this breakdown of the map of the soul is explaining that somewhat. It's 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 giving us this outline where it's saying that, okay, the way that we get these feelings, these emotions of, of loving God and fearing God and, you know, um, being in awe of God is another way to think about it. This comes from the mind. These are emotions that are birthed from the mind. And specifically speaking, it's birthed from these these intellectual faculties, the first two of which can be thought of as the mother and the father, which is the father is chokhma, which is this like inspiration, this like initial spark of insight and conception of the idea and Bina, which is the more fleshed out idea. So that is today's and we're going to continue this tomorrow uh, and we'll conclude the chapter then. I'll speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzhak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.